What's up, y'all? I thought I would jump on here because it is election time. At least in America, it's election time. And election season is always um, a unique time for Christians. Because oftentimes we can be quite conflicted on who we should vote for. And if you're like me, I'm an independent. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I haven't been for a long time. And I don't foresee in the future me ever going back to choosing a party. And simply because I do not agree with everything in either party. And I just don't, I don't like, there's some things I like in one part and both parties. And there are things I don't like about the other parties. And I don't think either one represents God, but during election season, there's always an attempt made to persuade people that there's one party that is God's party. And so what I want to do today, as in what I like to do, is I want to show you what I use, the standard I use. Because if you're not careful, people will make you think that God only cares about two things, abortion and LBGT. That's what they'll make you think the only thing God cares about. And they'll, and if you're not also careful, people make you believe that those things have more weight in the eyes of God than other things. And the Bible is very clear. Sin is sin. Like they, God doesn't differentiate. Like the, the murderer is not uh, worse than the liar. But in our way of thinking, it is not so in the kingdom of God. Right. And I'm going to show you that. So I want to show you the list that I use as my barometer for how I cast my vote. Now, this is not to tell you to vote Democrat or Republican. That is a private issue. But what I do want to do is give you the freedom to vote as you please, especially since right now there's a viral video going around of, uh, I believe it's uh, Jimmy Swaggart's son uh, condemning the black church uh, for being for voting Democrat. And you know, this is just one of the, the things that you can always expect to happen around election time is that people want to cause you to feel shame about the way you vote. They want you to feel shame about the way you vote because they are convinced that there are things that God likes. And it's usually only two things that they think he's offended by. So I want to show you the list of things that I use and you can use to apply uh, to your voting standard. So I use Proverbs 6, 16, because it lays out a very clear and distinct list. It says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination. One, a proud tongue. Two, I mean, a proud, I'm sorry. One, a proud look. Two, a lying tongue. Three, hands that shed innocent blood or murder. Four, a heart that devises wicked plans, a schemer. Uh, five feet that are swift and running to evil. Not, uh, six, a false witness who speaks lies. And seven, one who sows discord among the brethren. So let's look at the list. What do we have on the list? Right? We have a proud. We have pride. We have lying. We have murder. We have a schemer. We have a get wit. That's a person who don't know how to stand his ground, but, you know, flip flops back and forth. It easily runs to, to evil. We have a false witness or a person who will testify to things. It's still another form of a liar. But this time you're directly lying against people who have nothing to do uh, with what is, they're being accused of. Uh, and then there's one who sows discord, right? So you have these seven things. I use these seven standards. I ask myself when I'm looking at candidates, whether it's at the state level, whether it's at the uh, presidential level, whether it's a judge or a sheriff, 
the things I'm looking for, I'm looking for character issues. I'm looking for character issues. I'm looking for stances on policy issues. And so how do these things line up? How do these things line up? And so, you know, I think one of the biggest problems I have with oftentimes the Republican side of the aisle is we care deeply about abortion and LBGT, but we'll be the same group of people fighting to take away health care or take away things from uh, the poor or to demonize people who come looking from another place looking for help. We're those same people, same people, same people. And so I have such a problem with that. Do I have a problem with the LBGT and uh, the abortion stuff? I absolutely do. That's why I said I have a problem with things on both sides of the aisle. I can't see how anybody could affiliate themselves as a believer with either party. Because I think both of them have very serious flaws. And when I look at this list, when I think about whether they are liars, they are most certainly liars on the ticket. When I think about dissension, there's definitely those on the ticket who are trying to divide rather than unite. When I look at uh, uh, the ticket, there are definitely people scheming, saying they want to do one thing, being dishonest about their intentions. Um, there's definitely lying on the ticket. Right. So I'm looking at these seven things. These are the things that I look at. You, you, I will sometimes vote Democrat. I will sometimes vote Republican. It's going to be, it's going to all be determined by these seven things. And I want you to, to use this and be free, free to vote as you choose and not to allow people on either side of the aisle to try to make you feel shame. Because you are choosing to cast your vote the way you cast your vote by uh, assuming you're going to, by some of them doom you. I just saw somebody try to doom everybody to hell. Absolutely not. And when I hear stuff like that, that tells me you just don't even understand the very basics of the gospel. So, you know, use the word. The whole council. You know, the whole council. What stirs me to even get up and make the video, seeing I haven't even made a video in a long time, is I'm always agitated this time of the year. Because people always, Christians, this is not to you unbelievers. You believe what you believe, you do what you do. But to the believers, man, leave people alone about the way they're choosing to vote. Because most of the time, what you are assuming is that God only cares about two things when there's a whole rack of things that God cares about. This is just the seven things that are listed. We could go into how God feels about the poor. We could read, we could read where he almost promises to curse a nation for not taking care of their poor. He, he, he pretty much says, y'all not going to have it good if they don't have it good. And I'm going to see to that. Right. So there's so many other things to consider when you're looking for who is going to represent you. And that's going to largely be determined by where you fall in that spectrum. Where you what the issues are that you care about, what the issues are that you uh, uh, find valuable. One of the reasons that African Americans usually vote in this way is because there is still a lot of unfairness that happens. There's a lot of unfairness that happens. I mean, it's fairly obvious, even if people want to deny. That is, one day when I can speak, I will share direct personal experiences where I can tell you absolutely factual that there's still Maybe not intentional unfairness, but most certainly there's some unfairness, right? And so people are voting based on their own personal experiences. And that is nobody else's business. And so I'm not here to tell you how to vote.
but I did want to give you some parameters if you're looking for parameters to vote your conscience and not feel bullied by the Democrats mm -hmm. or bullied by the Republicans into a point of view. Let the scriptures bully you into a point of view. Is the person a liar? Is the person a dissension, a dissension maker? Is the person schemes, a schemer? Are they quick to run to do evil things before they run to do good things? Are they proudful? Prideful? Are they murderers or supporters of murderers? So these are the things that we're looking at. These are the things that I use. And I invite you to use the same thing. And go on and cast your vote and tell everybody to mind their business and leave you alone.